welcome to my views and news some new stories from Ethiopia and Eritrea firstly last night i reported that in marsa city of north volo a protest was going to be held preparations were underway last night and uh, on sunday today the protest was uh, expected to be held the protest was uh, to condemn the assassination of Girma Shitila. So it was being seen as anti fano protest. What happened there? Reportedly, unknown gunmen resorted to aerial firing to frighten the people to prevent the demonstration in Marsa city. We have details for you. Secondly, viewers, uh, another rally. Uh, which was held in another city of the Amhara region today. Government backed rally, it turned into demonstration, turned into a protest against the government. Thirdly, viewers, Esas Voki, Eritrean president, has arrived in Beijing, China. I want to share an observation with you about uh, Eritrea China relations. Ethiopia US relations and Eritrea China relations. Firstly, viewers, uh, preparations were underway to organize a rally in uh, Amhara region of Ethiopia. Rally was due to be held in Marsa city. Marsa is in Volo. The rally was being organized, it was being backed by the government and people were being approached they, they were being contacted to participate in the rally preparations were underway last night i reported about preparations rally was due to be held today on a sunday and uh, the rally was uh, being held to condemn the killing the assassination of girma Yishitila. Amhara Prosperity Party leader who was assassinated in North Show a few days ago. And we saw that after Grimashtila's assassination, no large scale protests were held in Gojam or Gondar. Only in Volo, uh, two protest rallies were held uh, and those were backed by the government. Why were no rallies held? Because uh, government accused two Fano commanders, uh, Brate Shigao and Mire Vodajo, that they assassinated, they planned the assassination of Kirma Ishtila. And government named uh, journalist Kobuze Sise too, that he was part of uh, the planning. So any protest in the region to condemn Kirma Ishtila's assassination is seen as anti Fano protest. And uh, Fano uh, supporters, some hardliners, they have been threatening those who took out rallies, uh, two rallies in Volo recently. Now, another rally was planned due to be held today, but the rally reportedly could not be held. This morning, dozens of armed fighters, they resorted to aerial firing in Marsa city. For several minutes, they kept on firing outside a police station reportedly, Kabale 1 or Kabale 2 police station. There they fired in the air and uh, there were around 40 to 50 of them. It was a message from these armed people armed fighters that no rally should be held in Marsa. Who were they? The sources say they were Fano fighters. I could not confirm holding of a rally in Marsa so far. The incident of aerial firing happened around uh, 11 a.m. 11 between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. today. So the purpose of aerial firing was to terrorize the people, to stop them from organizing the rally. That is why I say these protest rallies to condemn Girma Ishtila's assassination are basically anti-Fano rallies, backed by the government, but uh, 
Fano fighters, their supporters, they try to prevent these rallies. Though Girmashtila's family members uh, are supporting Ethiopian federal forces in the operation against Fano in North Shore. And that is why we do not see any rallies in Gojam Gondar because there uh, Fano has more presence, uh, more following than in uh, Wallo. Where Romos live in large number too. Same is the case in North Shore as well. The incident of aerial firing has been confirmed. Several sources have confirmed. It means that if no rally was held in Marsa, it means security forces could not provide security to the people there. Maybe rally was held, but I could not get any pictures, videos, confirmation. So, we'll update you in, vid in coming videos. So far, Fano fighters today tried to prevent the rally by resorting to aerial firing in Marsa, confirmed. Secondly, we also another rally, support rally, like the one in Marsa was planned. Uh, it was due to be held in uh, Lalibala, North Volo, historic city with historic sites. And there, uh, it was government organized rally, preparations were underway, uh, government succeeded in organizing people and uh, hundreds reportedly took to the streets. Some say that uh, last night and before that uh, government officials, they contacted people, they promised to give them seeds, fertilizer, etc. People attended the rally, support rally to support the government, to condemn the assassination of Girma Ishtila, to support government's decisions regarding disbandment of special forces, etc. But when the rally started, youth started chanting slogans against the government. And this support rally turned into a protest rally. People, participants, especially youth, they started condemning the government in the rally. So the support rally turned into a protest rally and then security forces were there. They were backing the rally. They had to disperse the rally participants. They used force as well. Uh, no news of any casualties or anyone injured. But they disperse the rally and now reportedly they are trying to arrest those who try to hijack the rally. Government forces say that some uh, elements try to hijack the rally by creating a conflict. Security forces are conducting raids reportedly on the houses of those who were there at the rally, youth especially. This anti-government sentiment in the Amhara region is uh, there. Government is trying to control the situation by organizing support rallies, but support rallies turn into protests. Uh, lastly, viewers, Eritrea. Eritrean president arrived in China today uh, on a state visit. He was invited by uh, Xi Jinping, a Chinese president. He arrived in Beijing welcomed there by Chinese government officials. Xi Jinping will host a ceremony, uh, a banquet in the honor of Isasa Wilkie. And uh, Chinese media is showing the arrival of Isasa Wilkie there. Isasa Wilkie has visited China on more than one occasion. A correction, I said the last time he was in China, it was in 1960s. No, he was in China in 26 as well to attend China-Africa summit. Before that, in 1960s, he received military training there when he was uh, an ART and Liberation Front fighter, a student back then. Student, also an activist, he visited China. Uh, and a journalist has shared pictures so from 1967 when Sasa Wuki visited China. Now he's once again back in China, uh, visiting China, and he wants to learn from China, how China progressed economically. Let's see. Now, uh, I want to share with uh, you one observation that uh, in Sudan, foreign nationals are being evacuated by their countries, by their governments. 
European countries, US, China, uh, Arab countries, all are uh, evacuating their nationals. Americans used route through Ethiopia. Uh, American military helicopters, they flew from Djibouti, they landed in Bahidar, refueled, and then they uh, flew towards uh, Sudan, they entered Sudan, they evacuated their people. Chinese uh, nationals were evacuated through Eritrea. From Khartoum, from nearby areas, they were taken to uh, Eritrea. And from Eritrea, then to their next destinations. That just shows China taking Eritrean route, U.S. taking Ethiopian route. That just shows the closeness of uh, Eritrea and China. Both are coming closer, no doubt about that. Uh, we can analyze this, uh, the relations, uh, maybe comparatively to uh, Ethiopia, U.S. relations, uh, Eritrea, China relations in some videos. This visit is crucial. I've been saying that for the last three days that the visit is crucial. Why? Because Isas Averki will try to learn from economic progress in China. He'll try to implement the Chinese model in NRT. Because he now believes that he's in a position to work for the improvement of NRT in economy. He does not want to adopt a Western model. He wants to adopt Chinese model. Let's see what he learns and implements in Eritrea. Thanks for watching.